So today we're going to be uh, talking about prayer. Uh, it's a follow-up from Sunday's message. Our Back to Basics sermon series touched on uh, a text where Jesus was talking to the crowds and he said, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden and heavy burdened and carrying these loads in your soul, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest for your soul. I will help you not to feel like you're feeling right now. And um, and I'm so grateful for that passage. I'm so grateful that Jesus offers us that invitation, not only to those crowds 2,000 years ago, but to us still today. Come to me, Jesus says. And uh, that invitation is so powerful, uh, so valuable, so needed. Um, I remember a time where uh, children were having a birthday party and my uh, my son uh, received a birthday invitation and he said, I'm invited? Me? And he was so honored. He was so pleased and that stuck with me. That was probably five years ago. And, and that's how I feel about how Jesus, when Jesus invites us to come to him, I think those same words, I'm invited? Me? wretched soul that I am. Thank you, Lord, for inviting me to come to you because, oh, I so need it. I so need to escape from um, the trials of this life some days. <laughs> um, you know, some days it just, life seems hard. We go through grief, we go through loss, we grow, go through aggravations sometimes that are uh, real and sometimes imagined. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm thankful that in the midst of it all, Jesus calls us home. He calls us to him. And he doesn't just do it at the end of life. You know, God calls us to come to him even as we live and move and have our very being and our days here on earth. And so as we do that, as we have our very being uh, in life uh, on this side of heaven, on this side of the Jordan, as one pastor put it one time, um, I am thankful that we can come to him. But, you know, thinking about coming to Jesus, if you're either a new believer or maybe you've, you're not a new believer, you've been believing a long time, but you have no clear understanding of how to commune with God and how to respond to that invitation. Um, my my um, understanding of this is that we take our first step through prayer. We take our first step to respond to God's invitation to come to Christ through prayer. And uh, as children, if you're raised in the life of the church or you go to a church school like the one we have here, this, the um, Children's Weekday Ministry Child Development Center, uh, you'll learn prayers. You'll learn prayers like our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. That prayer is so powerful because it's one that's found in scripture in the book of Matthew, the gospel of Matthew chapter six. And it's, it's, a, it's a model for prayer. Jesus is explaining to the disciples, this is how you pray. Our Father who art in heaven. And you acknowledge that God is, is not only the powerful creator, but God is our Father. God loves us. God embraces us. There's love in that statement, okay? And so our Father who art in heaven. So God is so much bigger than us. And so we can we can start our prayer by just simply saying something like, Lord in heaven, God in heaven, Father in heaven, Daddy, I need you. You are so much bigger than me. And so our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Um, hallowed be thy name is, is a really fancy way to say, God, you are holy. Your name is holy. You are above all. And uh, in some ways, how dare I even say your name? Um, hallowed be thy name. And that that points us back to the scripture of, of where God told um, Moses and the Ten Commandments, uh, do not take my name in vain. God's name is holy. It should not be used in vain. We should not blaspheme the name of God. We should not just go around um, uh, saying God did something that we don't know that God did. And, and so... Um, 
hallowed be thy name. And so it's an acknowledgement of God's holiness, of God's goodness, of God's mercy. There's a mosquito flying, so I don't know if you see that, but if you see me fighting something invisible, it is not a spirit. It is a mosquito in Texas, and you know how vicious they can be. So we're going to pray that thing away. Amen? Amen. And so anyway, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. And so when we think about the kingdom, sometimes we think about that, you know, heaven, uh, and, and that's good because heaven is a part of the kingdom. But when Christ came that we may have life and have it more abundantly, that uh, brought the kingdom. Uh, the kingdom is at hand. Those are the words that um, that John the Baptist used, and that that Jesus um, that Jesus used. And so Jesus brought the kingdom on earth, and and His will for us is that we too would participate in the kingdom on earth as it is in where in heaven. Um, and while things here won't ever be perfect, I wish they could. I wish that that life could be better. That there were no more oppression. That there was no more violence. That there was no more abuse. That there was no more of the evils that we face uh, from time to time, um, but we do, um, we do have to face those things. And so um, we pray that God's will would be done in spite of the evil that we face, in spite of the evil that persists, God's will be done on earth right here as it is in heaven. A reminder that God desires that we would have life and have it more abundantly. And so as you walk through the Lord's Prayer as a model for prayer, it gives us some very simple words to say. It's a very short prayer to guide us in not simply uh, saying the prayer. We can say the prayer um, that we learn in the model prayer, but also to learn how to pray using those words. You know, um, in fourth grade and third grade, the kids get these assignments to uh, paraphrase, learn how to paraphrase paraphrase. And so when you begin to learn how to paraphrase and put things into your own words, we can use that same um, that same exercise in our prayer life. And so using a prayer that already exists, like the model prayer, the Lord's Prayer, and putting a prayer in our own words is something I want to encourage you to do. So that as you respond to the invitation to Christ to come to him, all who are weary, all who are heavy laden, we will know that um, we do have words to say and he's given them to us. Um, give us this day our daily bread. It's a simple request. Lord God, meet me at the point of my need. Meet me where I need you. I'm hungry in my physical body and in my soul. Um, give me, Lord God, this day my daily bread. But he follows that up with a, a request for forgiveness. So forgiveness, excuse me, forgiveness is something that God desires that we would participate in, not just receive, that we would give it just like we receive it. In fact, in the scriptures following the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus tells the disciples that you will be forgiven just as you have forgiven others. And the same measure that you hold a grudge against others, um, what if that was held against you? You know, we, we should we should practice forgiveness um, in a very real and um, serious way, a beautiful way. And so, um, so anyway, the Lord's Prayer goes on and I want, I want to invite you to look at Matthew chapter 6 and take some time to sit with the Lord's Prayer, paraphrase it. Um, you can make it longer, you can make it shorter, and it's not that you're changing the word. You're simply using it as an example for prayer to get your motor running and your prayer life because we all could use a little pick-me-up in that area, I believe. And there are times where my prayer life is fantastic and phenomenal. I'm praying all day. I can write a prayer and um, you know the drop of a hat and then there are times where I sit in front of the computer and I write I'm trying to write a prayer Lord have mercy okay maybe we'll edit that out um, <laughs> there are times in my life uh, where my prayer life is um, is good and I'm able to write prayers and to pray extemporaneously just just at the drop of a hat um, and then there are times where I'm at a loss for words where all I have is a groan where all I have it are tears, and and God receives that. But he gives us a model so that we can have the words, whether we can speak them, whether we write them, whether we simply hear them, or we say them in our heart. Um, 
not every person is able to physically write a prayer or speak the words or even hear. And so um, I think that we need to remember that God is always accessible to us, no matter our abilities, our disabilities, no matter our situation, no matter our trials, God is always accessible to us. And that's why Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary, all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. Amen. And so again, visit visit with the Gospel of Matthew chapter 6 and, and read about it. If you'd like to talk to me more about the, the model prayer, uh, leave me a comment in the chat, send me a direct message. Uh, make sure that you let me know how to get in touch with you because I'd love to talk to you about it. I'd love to maybe walk with you through a book on the model prayer or just different ways to help you strengthen your prayer life. And so we have lots of resources uh, to help us pray. Sometimes there are resources that we don't think about as, as an example. Um, of ways to pray. And so I'm, I have a few right here that I want to share with you. And one of them is the United Methodist Hymnal. Oh, how I love this book. The United Methodist Hymnal is full of prayers and hymns and instruction on how to worship. And it's not something that should just be used on Sunday in church. No, I believe that the United Methodist Hymnal is a resource that we should be using at home in our own personal time. And so if you don't have a copy, please don't steal one from your church. I mean, it's the church. Don't do that. But order one on, um, you know, Amazon, my favorite place to buy all the things. But go and uh, get you a copy of the hymnal. You can also download um, a copy on, if you have an, an iPhone, you can download a digital copy of the hymnal and most of the content is in there, not all. Um, and you can use the uh, hymnal as a, as a means of prayer. And I'm going to prove it because I'm going to literally open this up to any random page and I'm going to read a prayer. Now it's called a hymn. It's number 431, Let There Be Peace on Earth. But just imagine if I were reading this as a prayer. So I'm going to start it off with a Our Father. Um, Our Father who art in heaven, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Ooh, that's a powerful prayer, right? Like taking ownership of uh, my, my part in bringing peace on earth. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord, our God, let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. Lord, you are our creator. Children, all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me, oh God. Let this be my moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow, oh God, to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Amen. Oh, amen. This was him again, number 431. It's usually sung. Um, I'm not going to sing. I'm not going to do that uh, right now. But you can flip through the hymnal. And while I don't necessarily expect you to every single day pick, go through it at random, but you can find maybe your favorite hymn. And um, for example, one of my favorite hymns is Amazing Grace. And um, I sing it at times of, of life and times of death. I sing Amazing Grace all the time, but the words of Amazing Grace are such an incredible prayer, aren't they? And so let's say we were starting the, the uh, hymn Amazing Grace, but instead of simply singing it, um, and there's nothing, nothing against singing. Singing is not a small act. Um, but we prayed it, that we took uh, the hymn, Amazing Grace, and we prayed those words. And we thought deeply about what God has done in our lives and what God is doing in the life of the people who are around us, who call themselves disciples of Christ, and what we hope for, for people that we so hope to be um, converted and we come into the family of God. Oh, Lord, my God, thank you for your amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Lord, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. That's a prayer of thanksgiving. That's a prayer of acknowledgement. It's a prayer um, recognizing the good things that God has done for us. And whew, what a blessing. Now, one, the last thing I'm going to mention in um, the hymnal 
is the Psalter. The Psalter is a section of the hymnal. It's toward the back. It starts at um, page uh, 735. And um, it is a section where the, the Psalms uh, are put to uh, a responsive reading. And so uh, if you have a hymnal, it'll look something like that. And I'm sorry that that might've been blurry. Um, and uh, the prayers in the Psalms, which I'm gonna turn to the scriptures next, um, give us a chance to pray together. So maybe you have people in your home, you have children, you have your spouse, you have a friend, you're using um, the phone. You can connect with others and have this responsive reading in the form of a prayer. Again, turning to a random uh, prayer, um, a random Psalm and reading it as a prayer. Psalm number five, um, the Psalter includes a responsive uh, song. And so I'm gonna read that as a prayer. And then I'm gonna read a little bit of the Psalm as a part of my prayer. Because sometimes um, we need some help with our words. And so the, the hymns and the, the Psalms give us that help and that support that we need. O oh Lord, our God, let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. That was the response that would normally have been sung, but isn't it a prayer? And now um, the, the actual song, it reads, give ear to my words, O Lord, give heed to my groaning, hearken to hear the sound of my cry, my ruler and my God, for to you I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice, in the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. The boastful may not stand before you, so let me not be boastful. You hate all evildoers, so let me not be evil, an evildoer. And so you can take these psalms and and let them guide you in your prayer. And as you walk through the Psalms, know that there will be moments of lament that you may not need to pray, okay? You may just need to read. We don't want you, um, you know, asking for the violence that was a present in the Old Testament upon anyone. And so be mindful as you read the Psalms that, um, that you are reading with your whole heart, with honest eyes and an honest heart and you uh, take that as an opportunity to help guide you in your prayer life. And, and, and maybe you feel like, oh, I know how to pray. I've been praying all my life. I, I'm good. I don't need any help with my prayer life. Try it anyway. Try it anyway so that as you respond to Christ's invitation to come to him, all who are weary, all who are heavy laden, uh, knowing that he will give us rest, that um, we, we can do a new thing sometimes and it opens us up um, to experiencing God in a bright and beautiful way. And so the scriptures, praying the scriptures. Um, I invite you to spend time reading um, the word of God, uh, spend time reading the prayers that are in uh, the scriptures in the gospel of Luke. Uh, there's a prayer that was prayed by the mother of Christ, uh, the Magnificat. And um, read over that prayer and read the, the words of praise that she offered. You can also read the words of prayer that Jesus himself offered um, in his time before he was taken to, um, to the cross. Um, in fact, one of the prayers that he prayed was found in the Psalms, Psalm 22, when Jesus said um, on the cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Those words actually come from Psalm 22. And um, those words of prayer, I find, I find it to be so profound that Jesus used the word for that moment. Because when we are in crisis, when we are hurting, when the times are hard, even Jesus had to refer back to a resource. Amen. And so use your resources and use them wisely. Know that they are available for you. There's so many ways to pray. I'm going to touch on two other ways um, and then we're going to wrap up. Okay. And so I uh, found this coloring book and it's called Pray for Others in Color. 
And in this coloring book, it's not just for children, but it's something that children can use. It's some, it's a resource where you can name God, beloved one. These are all names of God found in scripture. Bread of life, um, compassion, God of compassion, uh, amazing God, holy God. And then on the other side, there's places for you to write the name of God and write the name of someone you want to pray about. And as you focus your attention on coloring it in and filling in those, those spaces, um, it gives you a, a chance to really uh, clear your mind of all of the, the distractions that sometimes come and prevent us from actually um, really pouring our heart out to God. And it helps us to focus. And so as you color in your prayers, you could even ask God, as I color, remind me of what I need to pray for. And so praying using art, using color, uh, you can also pray um, using a journal. This fancy looking little book here is just blank pages on the inside. It's a journal. And you can use a prayer journal that is exists for the purpose, like it's literally designed as a prayer journal. Or you can just use a blank book and write down scriptures, write down questions, write down um, those inquiries that you have of God, um, those pains, those trials, those struggles. Write them down in a journal or get a very official prayer journal and let that be a resource to help you come to him. Because I, God invites us not to carry our load of anxiety and anger and um, the abuse that we may have faced, or even the expectations that people have on us or we have on ourselves. God in invites us to come and lay that burden down and know that we are loved, that we are cared for, that we are his and that's a beautiful thing. Um, I don't have one of these with me, um, but this is one of the ways that I like to pray also is using a labyrinth, a labyrinth. And so I wanna show you what that looks like. Um, a labyrinth is typically um, something that you walk. It looks sort of like a maze, but there's only one way in and one way out. And it gives you an opportunity to focus um, and pray, pray um, and as one, every time I walk the labyrinth, I just feel just this release of stress. And uh, I feel the sense of joy as I complete the task. And, um, and so I invite you to find a labyrinth. If you're in anywhere near uh, the church, uh, there's one in Shepherd Park. You can always uh, visit Shepherd Park and walk the labyrinth there. If you're near downtown or the medical center, there's a labyrinth at uh, St. Paul United Methodist Church. Uh, sometimes you can find a small little handheld labyrinth. I have one of those. It's made of glass. I'm going to show you a picture of that. Um, I order these uh, to give as gifts. And so if you've gotten one for me, I hope you're using it. I hope it's been a blessing for you. Um, but it's something that I use um, periodically. And I just trace the lines of the labyrinth to help calm my spirit and lay down those burdens. And, and instead of thinking about my great big to-do list, I can think about the goodness of God and um, put my whole trust in him. And so um, there's, again, more ways to pray. One is Lexio Divina, and maybe we'll spend some time doing that one of these days. Uh, Visio Divina, uh, the examine. That's another um, mode of prayer where you examine your day, you examine your heart, and you just look back and say, Hey, am I doing what God has called me to do? So maybe we'll talk about the exam next week. I think we'll talk about the exam next week because it's a part of our back to basics, um, our back to basics sermon series that we're in. And so the first week was hospitality. The second week was prayer. And uh, next Sunday, we're going to be talking about growth. We're going to be talking about growth. And so my hope and my prayer is that you will be with us in worship, either in person or online. You can uh, go to uh, this Facebook page. You can go to the YouTube page to, to log in and um, view the service and worship with us. Uh, and I believe that when you go online for worship, you're not just viewing a service. You are worshiping with us. And so sing along and pray along and take your notes or whatever you need to do. Um, because we want you to worship with us. And if you're able to make it in person, I'll, I'll be so glad to see you. Uh, come give me a handshake, a high five, or a holy hug, as my pastor used to say. And, um, and just let me know that you are with us. 
I'm thankful for you, for your time, for your attention. And I hope that these words of wisdom have been a blessing to you on this Wednesday afternoon. Uh, God, God be with you and I'll see you soon. Let's pray. Lord God, we bless you. We honor you. We lift you up. Thank you for giving us words of wisdom in your holy word. Thank you for your love that abounds. Thank you for your invitation to always come to you. No matter what we face, no matter how we feel, no matter the mistakes we've made, you are able to receive us, to forgive us, to turn us around and put us on the path of righteousness for your name's sake. We love you, Lord. And we thank you for your love for us. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. God be with you until we meet again.